Hey there, welcome to or welcome back to No Pants Profits. My name is Richard and I'm coming to you today from Epcot, the experimental prototype community of tomorrow, or, uh, you know, as everyone calls it, every person comes out trashed. Um, and I want to talk today about remote work, getting your work done from the parks. We're going to visit all four parks over this video, Epcot Magic Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, and Animal Kingdom, and find out the best places for you to remotely work to, um, you know, to, to remotely connect. I've got my backpack that's got some batteries in it, that's got a laptop in it and everything like that. And, you know, while I come to the parks, it's nice that they do have very few, but uh, they have them, EV chargers. So I've got my truck plugged in right here into a charge point, and then there's a Tesla hanging out right here that's just at the EV charger, not even charging. <laughs> but what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and we are going to explore all four of these Disney parks, maybe even some hotels and some things off the beaten path and figure out the best place to remote work while you vacation, maybe? So join me as we enter from the EV parking. We enter, which is better than handicap parking, but kind of hard to get. I had to get here about 45 minutes before the park opened, before the park opened to get this parking. But as we head in from the EV parking, to the experimental prototype community of tomorrow, or uh, every person comes out trashed. And we can see just where you can get some work done. You know, the Disney parks during your workation, staycation, I don't know what they go. Follow along. So something of note, if you are remote working, uh, you will, with a laptop, with some batteries, with some cables, you will get pulled aside by security. No need to worry, everything for remote work totally loud in the parks. Um, now the nice thing is we're at Epcot today. This is the monorail right here to the Magic Kingdom. You can take the monorail from the Epcot to the Magic Kingdom and not have to go through security again. Security is about a 15 to 20 minute process, so plan appropriately. If you are going on anywhere other than between Epcot and Magic Kingdom, you will have to clear security twice. So if you're going anywhere other than between there, you will have to clear security two times. Dos tiempos. Um, I do have a pass holder line here, which hopefully I can get in, but you will have to clear security twice. Be aware of that. Um, it is just about uh, 10 minutes, 12 minutes from park opening. So we're gonna go do some rides and then I'm gonna show you some places to kind of sit back, relax, and uh, get some work done. But yeah, you can bring laptops, you can bring batteries, you can bring all that. Just be aware that you're gonna get searched. So let's go to the first stop of our work from Disney Journey. Uh, this is currently known as Nemo and Friends in Epcot. Uh, it was formerly known as the Living Seas, Sea Base Alpha, whatever you want to call it. It's a nice open area, relatively quiet and relatively music free. Now there used to be a lot more seating in here than there, uh, than there is now. It is about 9.30 in the morning. Uh, with it being 9.30 in the morning, you might want to check emails, respond to emails, stuff like that. Yeah, you can do any of that waiting in line. Now what I personally did is I booked a lightning lane on test track for about half an hour, 40 minutes from now. Uh, but you have these areas right here. They, they, again, they used to have some actual seating here, but uh, you can come up here. Look at the turtles. These are not screens. These are actual aquariums. Look at the turtles, look at stuff like that. And you do have, uh, well, not in here. <laughs> I thought I was gonna have it. Um, you generally have Wi-Fi in here. But the Wi-Fi does not seem to uh, extend all the way back here. So we need to go a little bit down the tunnel because this is fully covered in water. <laughs> and this is a nice place that you can actually remotely work. So let's just see how the Wi-Fi is real quick. We will connect to Disney Guest. Again, not a, not a bad view from the office. I am an annual pass holder myself, so a little bit easier to just kind of escape here. Let's let that load up. We're gonna do a speed test real quick. Doing it in real time. Oh yeah, you, you, you can get some work done from here. I mean, let's see, that's the uh, the download. Disney's done some great jobs improving their uh, connectivity lately. So that's the download. Let's see the upload. Yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, that's totally doable. Now here, you will kind of have to prop up against a wall 
or something like that, or I think, think, think there might be some seating inside the uh, Turtle Talk entrance. Let's just let's go in real quick and see. So this is Turtle Talk with Crush. Is there some seating here? Yeah. No, there's not. So there's not actually uh, any seating in this pavilion, but I mean the Wi-Fi. Oh, sorry. The Wi-Fi is actually not just good. The Wi-Fi is freaking amazing. I mean, we'll do it one more try. But yeah, you're going to be here at least, you know, leaning against the wall. But again, we're walking around. Great connectivity. Great place to kind of remote work from if you wanted to. Seabase Alpha, Nemo and Friends, the Living Seas, whatever you want to call it. But now I've gotten some work done. And uh, my test track lightning lane is available. So I'm going to go over and use that. Again, this is not a traditional Disney vlog. I'm not taking you on test track. But uh, I, got, I got a lot more remote work locations in mind for Epcot. Stay tuned. So on our way over to test track, uh, we're going to Project Tomorrow, which is actually the exit of the big ball. Epcot is uh, everything's potentially under construction. No, I don't EP. Everything's potentially construction or trashed yeah i think that's the new uh the new epcot everything's potentially construction or trashed uh this is the exit to the big ball attraction and uh we're gonna see this is a nice quiet place as well there technically is some seating here you'll see just just talking technically there's a there's a bit of seating here i think it's uh meant to be used while you're doing these things that are here but uh oh no there's no oh, wow no, there's actual seating here. This is a, an actual seat, but seating means nothing if the Wi-Fi is trash. So, let's answer our question. Is the Wi-Fi trash? 9.37 a.m. on the way to test track. Uh-oh. <laughs> the Wi-Fi's not only trash, let me try and reconnect. It's showing that there's not Wi-Fi in here. Ooh. Ooh, that's a rough one. I'm show I'm gonna show all these areas regardless. Or irregardless, or whatever they like to say, but the Wi-Fi just literally falls off in this building for some reason. It's the first place we found that actually has good seats. But the Wi-Fi, and I'm using an iPhone 15 Pro Max. The Wi-Fi is just non-existent, or there's just another network. Let's see. This is the internet TWDC, but I think this is actually, yeah, this is their corporate internet. Um, we don't have Wi-Fi in here. It's a perfect place. It's got seats, it's got air conditioning and everything, but there's no Wi-Fi in here. No public Wi-Fi in this building for some ungodly reason. So not a good option. All right, so we are at the exit of Test Track, also known as a car showroom in the middle of a theme park for no reason. There is plenty of seating. The background noise is not that bad. Uh, there's nothing like copywritten or anything like that. It literally just sounds a little, little futuristic. Let's see how the Wi-Fi is. Again, there's no plugs here. Uh, so you would need to bring like a USB-C battery pack or something like that, but um, or, you know, laptops are lasting longer and longer every day now. I just use my laptop very, very hard when I use it. Let's see. Yeah. A cell phone service, though, is non-existent. But your Wi-Fi calling will work perfectly fine. Uh, we're on a 104 by 132. Again, plenty of seating. There we go. 104 by 127. Stronger upload than download, which is impressive. But you'll see we've got nice seating right here. A lot of nice seating not too loud not any crazy noises it's a good place you know if you wanted to let's just talk theory real quick i mean if you wanted to right here just go into your bag grab your uh, grab your laptop out and connect it's just uh what time is it now it is a uh, 10 10 13. uh we got our next lightning lane in about 20 minutes or so but um 
good place to stop, good Wi-Fi, and we've got another place next door. I don't like the ride, but I want to check out the connection to the seating. And honestly, when I go to Epcot, the next place I'm going to show you is where I actually got to go. Because I good, got good AC connectivity and everything. So let's go to space. So here is my least uh, favorite ride on Disney property. It's called the uh, Claustrophobia Express of Mission Space. The good news is um, there's a really good place to remote work that's right in the exit of it. So you kind of go counterintuitive to the flow of people, enter through the gift shop. I know, that's so different than exit through the gift shop. You enter through the gift shop, and there's this whole interactive area here. But what's nice is there's seats, and there's good Wi-Fi. And look, if you hear a little bit of this music in the background, you might be able to hear it in my mic. You may not. Uh, if you got to do Zoom calls and stuff, bring a mic. But there is so much seating here. Now, you will have a little bit of this uh, background noise here. But, you know, if you've got to be on a Zoom call, maybe we've not found a perfect place. Actually, the Living Seas is a pretty perfect place for a Zoom call. But this is relatively quiet, good seating and everything like that. And let's see how the Wi-Fi is. Again, we're doing this on a 15 Pro Max. Okay. We've had better Wi-Fi other places. We have uh, reasonably full bars, but you see you've got all this seating right here. A little clanky clanky in the background. But you've got further away, right over here. You've got some spots. Yeah, this is not great Wi-Fi compared to some of the other places that we've been. But, you know, you come to the right place. It's relatively quiet. Let's just see. Well, we went on 5G. We're trying to go on Wi-Fi. Let's love you a second. I will tell you what I'm using right now, just so you can understand. I'm using a tiny little microphone from DJI that comes along with my camera. So, uh, just for fun in here, because this has some interesting noises. I'm gonna turn it off. And it's probably the loudest of the environment so far. So now you're hearing me directly through the microphone on the camera. Uh, let's try the Wi-Fi again. The Wi-Fi is actually uh, not great here on my phone. It's pretty reasonable last time I did it on my laptop. It's about a 10 by 10 by 10 connection. Nothing like the 100 by 100 we had at the last spot. But I'm leaving this uh, audio on just for right now so you can hear what it sounds like in here. And we've gone a little bit further towards the gift shop. Uh, yeah, that, that's, got a, that's got a bit of theme music, but I leave this so you can kind of hear it. Let's just try real quick. One more speed test here. It does not want to get an IP address in this building. Oh, very interesting. Last time I was here, this was my, uh, this was my go-to place. Now, the cellular's still pretty okay. Oh, there we go. There's Wi-Fi. Yeah, it must have just been that one bad spot. Looks pretty good overall. And again, I, I don't have a microphone anymore. So I don't know uh, how you're hearing me right now, but uh, the exit to Mission Space is a, another cool place you can remote work. Uh, we're gonna head back to the back of the park now and take a look at some of the countries and stuff like that. See where you can remote work there. Stick around. All right, and for our next place for remote work, we've actually got the exit to Journey to Your Imagination Figment, whatever you wanna call it. Um, they've got a couple benches here. It's relatively quiet in this corner. If you need to take a Zoom call, Something like that. This seems to be the place. Um, got good internet. We're running it right now. Let's see? 57 by 113. Yeah, it's doable. Um, there, there's only one negative. So you see, so you got right here, right here. It's really nice and quiet. I'd have to say, honestly, this is the quietest of the places so far uh, that I've been to. The only negative is there's an abomination that you have to look at. You might say, what abomination is what you're talking about? There's this thing. It is pure, pure nightmare fuel. It's like they thought they could reimagine Figment and turn him into nightmare fuel. There he is. That's the nightmare, nightmare fuel Figment. If you don't know where nightmare fuel is, I'm oh, sorry. If you don't know where nightmare fuel is, that right there, Figment, that, is nightmare fuel. But again, right as you're leaving the Figment attraction, or you can just come in that door, you'll see that door back there, 
You've got uh, some benches, and you've got nice peace and quiet here, to be honest with you. Uh, and you know, this would be the greatest place. Let me sit down for a minute. You can take a Zoom call right here. This is the most neutral, simple place I've seen so far. I don't see anything that would kind of give away what this was. It just looks like a background somewhere. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say so far in this park, we got good Wi-Fi, neutral background, relative quietness. It's probably the winner so far, if you need to get something done. And they got a gift shop right here with drinks and candy and all that, if you have to keep the kids entertained. Uh, but uh, we've done a lot of the future world. I think we're gonna head back to World Showcase now, but we're gonna probably grab lunch uh, in the meantime. So. Uh, I'll catch you when we're at the back of the park. But in the front of the park, you've seen all the places so far that uh, good work from home spots uh, in Epcot. All right, so for your next kind of uh, work from the theme park in Epcot, you might as well uh, get some work done from space. You know, it, it is kind of hard to get a reservation here for a table. We happened to get one yesterday, but you can always walk in and go to the lounge here. Uh, and yeah, there's, there's a whole room for you to... I don't really want to open my laptop on camera because you never know what's going to show up. Okay, just a Google screen, thank God. I don't want to talk about what was there before. Um, but you know, you've got room to sprawl out your laptop and yes, they have a full cocktail menu that done, that done disappeared. I know she took it. It was a cool menu. Here, I can look it up. Let's find beverages. So this one has boba in it. It's called Illumination! Bacardi, Malibu, passion fruit, blood orange, pineapple, lime sour, and passion fruit boba. Uh, let's just do a quick uh, internet speed test. I'm gonna boot my laptop up and see how we're doing. But uh, from space, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a pretty good speed from space. It's nice and quiet here, so if you wanna have a nice working lunch, this is a good place. You'll see your uh, download is pretty good. I don't know how they're getting this uplink all the way in space. It's not real. Space Force. Space Force, yeah. Uh, and upload's good too. And yeah, you can get this on uh, phones, laptops, stuff of the sort. And they have food and drinks. And look, oh, look how cute. It's their, it's, their fir it's their first time in space. It's cute. But yeah, you can get your whole setup with your laptop and all that going. There aren't plugs here. This is something I did not show you yet. Uh, I use these big anchor battery packs which are nice. Uh, they've got USB-C on them, and I can charge my laptop, my phone, everything. It'll last all day. Great place to kind of get some work done. So some could say it's out of this world. So let's talk about another quiet place to work from at Epcot. I know it's been a few hours, uh, but I want to talk about another quiet place to work from at Epcot. This is the American Adventure Pavilion. There is plenty of seating. There's actually a show that happens here called the American Adventure that I'm gonna go see right now. But it does have quite a good internet speed overall. So let's see where we're at. You've got benches, you've got benches against the wall, you've got everything like that. For some reason, for some reason I'm connected to cellular. Let me, uh, let me airplane myself real quick. Cause I wanna show you the actual speed. We do need to go up cause we're literally uh, a couple seconds from the start of the American Adventure. And this might not be the best bet. Because again, much like the last place we were in, we guessed Wi-Fi seems to uh, kind of fall off. Um, there's no guest Wi-Fi. So even though it might seem like a nice place to sit in remote work, unless you've got your uh, cellular data going, it's probably not. There we go. Guess that. Disney guess. Let's see. Stick with me. <laughs> Speed test. We're trying. It's thinking. And at the same time, it's like, nope. Yeah, there's, there's a whole thing. No, no, no. There's a connection here. I'm on airplane mode. For some reason, it's connected. There we go. Reasonable connection downstairs on the first floor. There's a whole bunch of seats that you can definitely sit in. But um, this is an absolutely great place to go ahead right downstairs and remote work. I will let you know before the show 
they do have some singers. So if you are a, on a Zoom call or something and you go to one of the earlier shows in the day, you may want to watch out for the singers. But um, overall, say pretty, let's see, reasonable. Oh, oh God. Yeah, the Wi-Fi keeps going up and down. I'm going to say uh, no. It's remote work for me here. Just saying. So we might find another place in the back of Epcot that you can remote work from. But every place we've been so far, it's actually in the front side of Epcot. All right. So we are ready for park number two. Um, we did Epcot. Uh, I will let you know. Got a little late at Epcot. Got a little too much uh, sauce at Epcot. Never made it over to the second park. But uh, we are in... Magic Kingdom now on the first day of the Christmas parties. So they're actually coming down and they're uh, they're singing and everything like that. I will say on Epcot, the main winner was the Future World area. So the Future World area was your best place to remote work. I would have to say it's kind of a tie between Figment and Test Track. So that's where I'm feeling. But yeah, you'll see, again, kind of weird. They're coming down singing down the street. So Epcot, I think, is the easiest of the uh, work from park locations. We're going to find some places in Magic Kingdom, in Hollywood Studios and all that. But yeah, there's nothing great in the back of Epcot unless you're using your cellular data. They really haven't built out the Wi-Fi that strong in the, um, in the World Showcase part of Epcot. So we're headed into Magic Kingdom. I do have a reservation to ride Tron, but then after that, we're going to go ahead and we are going to find some, uh, we're going to find some places that you can work from here. So I'm uh, taking a walk to Tron, and uh, I'll let you enjoy this for just a moment. Let me turn it over. Kingdom. This one's not going to be for everyone. You're not going to want to take a Zoom call here. But there's a bunch of benches right outside of Tron. Do be aware that on Tron, if you are carrying a laptop with you, you do have to actually put it in a locker. And the lockers will fit 16-inch MacBook Pros. I've got a 13-inch MacBook Air with me today. It'll fit 16-inch MacBook Pros, but if you got something chunkier or bigger than that, this could be a ride you're going to have to skip. Um, but yeah, they have a lot of benches and stuff here. You can hear the background music. You can hear there is a, about every 30 seconds a roller coaster that comes by. But there are, oh, there we go. There are a lot of, uh, there we go, benches in the area and things like that. But you can kind of hear a roller coaster going by. But as long as it's a reasonably cool day, it's uh, November now. It's 85, but it's still a reasonably cool day for Florida at least. Um, it's a good idea. You see, there's all these little benches. They are uh, being used a lot by child swaps and people waiting for their ride times to come and things like that, but there were a few available. I'm sure we're going to find some better options than this, but I just want to show this kind of as an option if you got to check in some emails and stuff like that. Maybe, you know, you're working a remote chat or any of those things. Might be good options. We haven't found a great place for like a Zoom call yet, but the day is early. We'll see where we get. Well, next up, we go on my uh, favorite ride in all the parks. My favorite ride inside a park, my favorite ride outside the park is actually the, um, the Skyliner. This is the Tomorrowland Transit Authority. Usually does not get a line longer than the, uh, longer than the actual ride itself. It's about a 10, 12 minute ride. Um, love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, but the question is, is it good for remote work? I'm gonna pop up my laptop on board everywhere but in the dark areas. 
and we'll see how the Wi-Fi speed and stuff keeps up. This could be good. Again, you're not going to want to take a Zoom call from here, but this could be good to jump on your laptop, get a little bit done, but you see, right there, very simple. I have a little uh, mobile office. It sort of reminds me, uh, like when I work in my truck. Once we get moving, I'll show you about what's going on. All right, so we have a front train, which is a good thing. Uh, we're in front of everyone else. And I think the question is um, whether or not there's actually good connectivity on this ride. And we're about to find out. Here we go. I've grabbed my laptop out. Whoa. This is the TTA Blue Line. We are moving around quite a bit. Um, Disney Guest is not uh, not being super stable here, so this might not be a good time to actually use uh, Wi-Fi. Welcome aboard the People Moon. I guess the question is, uh, how good is the cellular here? Your guide aboard this highway in the sky. The absolute best way so we'll see how the cellular life. connection is here. And this is on T-Mobile. Yeah. There's really nothing the cell like connection is great here. And what? Oh my God. The cell For connection is amazing here. If you have wings, this is this is 5G. What the hell? Is this Tomorrowland or is this Tomorrowland? Look at that download speed. Good God, I can't say I've seen a download speed like that outside of like very specific areas of New York City. Now I can actually uh, connect here maybe. Yeah, the laptop on Wi-Fi is, uh, is a bit sketchy. A bit sketchy. But there are these dark areas where you wouldn't really want to uh, so uh, be aware of that. But, uh, this is my favorite ride on all of Disney property, so I can't, I can't really hate it at all. Plus, you know, I'm in a front car, and look, there's the uh, every person comes out trash. Look, our experimental prototype community of tomorrow, that first park that we were in. Yeah, I mean, realistically, that's probably some of the best cell phone speeds I've ever seen. And yeah, if you've got tethering, you can tether that cell, cell phone uh, speed right, to your laptop to but my apps. god Except 300 stops. meg cell phone Those speed well, that's kind of unheard of i guess we are in tomorrowland at least for that let's see if we can find some place again i'm still looking for some place to take like a that zoom call this, this, this ain't this ain't it dog. this here might be one of the few times uh, that i can actually remote work in space mountain because i think it's broken i just got out of line for space mountain because uh it wasn't working and uh, uh, well, let's see maybe we'll be able to see space mountain we will be able to see space mountain in the light yes so this is a pretty cool uh, pretty cool visual that you never get to see uh, that is space mountain in the light and when we come around the next turn, you're going to really see it in the light. But these are all the work lights that are on. I was just in line for Space Mountain, and they kicked us out and shut them down. So when we go around this corner, you're actually going to see all the lights on, which is kind of a cool, uh, what relaxation cool function. The, the, the this most is the exit retreat in the galaxy, for Space Mountain. The but I should be able to see when we turn you this corner, kind of unique, today. is we'll be able to actually see Space Mountain with the... Uh, lights on when we get outside i want to show you a gadget that i have uh, that's kind of useful but yeah this is actually going to be pretty cool because this is something you don't normally get to see um this is what space mountain actually looks like just a barren empty building who would have thought it's a bunch of empty space but um we're gonna get moving Oh, can't see much yet. We're just seeing the dome. There we go. That is what the inside of Space Mountain actually looks like. It looks like they did get everyone evacuated. But this is a cool way to see, hey, even when Space Mountain's down, this goes through here. So it's a nice way to see the inside of Space Mountain without uh, actually getting stuck on. Space Mountain. Now, for a lot of this video so far, I've shown you a lot of the speed test and stuff on my phone. And I want to talk, uh, my phone is a thick boy. 
This is actually an iPhone 15 Pro Max, but it has a case on it that triples the battery. So you don't have to plug Mr. it in if you're using it all day. Um, Apple says these things have all day battery life. I think that's a Thank you. complete and utter lie. Um, but this is a case from a company called Zero Lemon. And I didn't really get to charge it all last night, but um, this will get you going. And they make them for every major phone. So if you have the newest Samsung phone, the newest iPhone, the newest Pixel, you can buy this for all of your phones. Yes, it could knock out a small child. Could be classified as a weapon in some places, but uh, that is a uh, thick boy phone case. But it'll keep your phone actually at 100% all day, no matter how hard you use it. But um, yeah. I really do love this ride. It's my favorite ride in all of Disney. It's cool, it's relaxing, and yeah, you can try the laptop once more. You can actually just kind of set, if you're here alone or you're just two people, you can set it up. And we can just try it with Hotspot. Remember that 300 meg connection? I apologize for my dirty speed. But uh, with that 300 meg connection, we should be able to get to quite a good speed here. Come on. The next station is Walt Disney's Carousel of Sorry Progress. Sorry for the ads. As usual. Yeah. Hey, so we're not getting 300 gets, megs. Like progress itself, this theater never but, uh, oh, there we are. A new generation yeah. to dream of a great big That is a tomorrow. perfectly workable download speed. 300 and... My God. My God, it gets even crazier. Maybe we are actually in the future. Who would have thought that Disney's outdated Tomorrowland would have half a gig cellular speeds? Half a gigabit, yeah. Half a gigabit connection cellular speeds in Epcot. Not Epcot, sorry. In Magic Kingdom, Tomorrowland. The original Epcot. So what have we learned so far? What have we learned so far in the Magic Kingdom? Well, we learned that uh, Tomorrowland has the best cellular service I've seen outside of Times Square. But, um, no real place to quietly remote work yet. So this is in Tomorrowland. It's rather early. It's still like 10.30. Let me see. Yeah, it's uh, 10.32 in the morning. But this is Cosmic Rays Starlight Cafe. It's very quiet. Has a relatively neutral, if not slightly Chuck E. Cheese in nature background. I do not see any plugs here. That's something we've been looking for the whole time. I do know where there are plugs in this park, in this park alone. Um, so I will take you to those plugs. This is not like the old days of interventions and stuff where you could find plugs in Epcot. They, they actually have some, some really cool plugins here. But let's see, even though, I mean, we're, we're in Tomorrowland, so we might as well use the, the cellular, but let's see how the Wi-Fi is. I don't think it's gonna be nearly as good as that cellular was at 400 megs on my, uh, on my laptop. There's the cellular. Not bad. And that's all you. That's the Wi-Fi. Sorry. There's the Wi-Fi. Not bad. You know, you can pop out a laptop. You can work from here. There's not much background noise here. Again, it's early. If you, can, I guarantee you, if you came here afternoon, meaning like in the afternoon or you know afternoon, it would be a little bit more difficult to uh, get quietness. But right now, there's quietness as far as you can throw yourself. There's no shows going on here. There's no music. There's just a little tiny background loop. And again, if you need to zoom, you know, yeah, the back might look like you're in a pizza hut a little bit, but it's not bad. If you got to zoom here or something like that, this is our first like actual good remote working spot. Uh, we finished at, uh, what is it? Uh, 83.6 down by 112 up. That'll work perfectly fine. I mean, it's nowhere near the cell phone speeds we were getting in the last place we are in, but that will work perfectly fine. So for Tomorrowland, your bet if you need to do some, uh, you need to do some remote work, Cosmic Ray Starlight Cafe, and right when you come in, you've got this nice quiet corner here without any music or anything. Yeah, if you've got kids and you're actually here on vacation and you don't want to remote work, there's a whole nother room here, which has a random ass alien that sings music and leaks hydraulic fluid. Uh, his name is uh, Sunny Eclipse. So yeah, his, his his name is Sunny Eclipse. He he sings music. He's a little louder, but there's good air conditioning. There's good Wi-Fi. Still, 
still haven't found plug outlets. But I do know where some are in this part. I mean, there's some right here, but they're a little sketchy to get to. But yeah, you don't want to be, uh, you don't want to be around this guy. There's some, some plug outlets if you desperately need them. You know, right back there. But I, I don't think they want you anywhere near uh, that guy because he, he does leak uh, hydraulic fluid, which is basically oil from time to time. Um, we are crossing from Tomorrowland over to Fantasyland. And we're gonna see if we can find a spot here. Cause again, it's getting, it's getting a little noisy. Maybe we can find a spot in Fantasyland. I think I have an idea. You'll see. So I haven't really come to you from any ride queues yet, but uh, on the newer the ride is, the better the Wi-Fi is gonna be inside the actual ride queue. So if you have something that's like made in the last 10 years, you're gonna actually have a pretty great Wi-Fi connection. Now your cellular might fall off because of all this rock work and everything around, but as long as you're in a ride that's made in the last 10 years or so, uh, they have put upgraded routers in here and it is fast. Now if you do go on something quite a bit older, you won't be as fast, but if you need to download files, check emails, even run VPNs, it works perfectly fine in lines for pretty much any ride that's made in the last 10 years and acceptable in the rest of the park. If something's been made or renovated in the last 10 years, they've got good Wi-Fi. And why they've got good Wi-Fi is everything's so reliant on the app here that you've got to have good Wi-Fi to actually uh, be functional at uh, using the app and booking the lightning lanes and doing it all your own because Disney's become kind of like the, uh, the self-checkout at the grocery store. They expect you to do it all yourself now. Just saying. All right, so we are directly behind the castle in Magic Kingdom. And this is my next place I'm gonna recommend uh, for doing remote work. It's called Pinocchio's Village House. If it's hospitable, they do have some outdoor seating. But let's go ahead, see if we can uh, get inside real quick. See how the speed is and everything like that. So you enter this way, you can order. There is some indoor seating here, but the, the outdoor seating is probably where you're going to want to be at. Um, as long as it's hospitable. I think that's the right word. Let's see how the Wi Fi is. This might be a cellular spot as well. But they have indoor and outdoor seating, and just get a drink and you're good. Now let's just see how the speed is on the Wi-Fi here. It's kind of so it's acting like it was at uh, American Adventure the other day. Yeah, it's here, but it's not great. Now, why is that? Well, because this is a much older part of the park. If you remember, just a few minutes ago, we were talking about the Little Mermaid. It's kind of a brand new attraction, and being a brand new attraction, you know, Proverbially, it's in this brand new expansion to Fantasyland. Uh, it's got a much, much, much better internet infrastructure that's in those buildings. Wi-Fi routers, cable runs, fiber runs. Yeah, they've run fiber for certain systems. But still, when you get over here, this is the older part of uh, Fantasyland. But I do want to show you something useful. So let's look this way. Uh, we've got Peter Pan on the left. And we've got It's a Small World on the right. But the thing I want to show you that's useful is actually something I know about. It's actually, believe it or not, bathrooms. Now you might look at me like, hey Rich, you're crazy. Why are you about to show me bathrooms? I'm going to show you bathrooms because this is one of the few places I know across all the parks that actually has plugs. And not just some, but a lot of them. So let's say you have a laptop that doesn't charge. Oh, Peter, Peter Pan's hanging out here. Let's say you have a laptop that doesn't charge via USB-C and you need an actual plug. Hey, look, there's Peter Pan. And you need an actual plug or you need a USB because your battery packs are dead. Uh, they built a bathroom area. It's a rather new bathroom area. It's all outside. But I'm pretty sure they have plugs of some sort at this bathroom area. Again, I'm a, I'm a battery pack donkey. Uh, I don't plug into random places because I don't. But I can swear that they built this whole area. I can swear they put some plugs here. I could be absolutely insane. Uh, 
no, I don't think I'm absolutely insane. I really don't think I'm absolutely insane. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Inside the tree is actual American outlets. So let's say you gotta charge up your battery, you gotta charge up your phone. They have USB-A, not USB-C, but look. Those are full 120 volt outlets. Yes, it is outdoors, but if you have a power adapter for your laptop, you gotta juice it up. Hopefully it's a great charge power adapter. It's got multiple sets of these outlets out here, right by the bathroom. Also, since we're here, let's, uh, let's do a quick Wi-Fi test. As we are outside, it seems to uh, prefer not being on Wi-Fi. But this is a newer area of the park. This is actually where they used to have the Sky Ride. It would end here, uh, in one end of it. So let's just see if we can get this to connect real quick. Sarah. Speed test. So yeah, um, you've got that, the Cosmic Ray Starlight Cafe. You've got the Pinocchio Village House. And you've got yeah. over here at the bathrooms, it's more of an outside wear place for working. And yeah, the Wi-Fi doesn't really hold on here, but that covers your Tomorrowland and your Fantasyland. The next place we're headed is actually into Liberty Square. Now I've got a fast pass for the Haunted Mansion. So I'm gonna go on that and I'll see you right after. And I think we're gonna do an early lunch. Let's actually let's pull our laptop out and do what we've got to do. So let me jump in this lightning lane real quick for the Haunted Mansion. And I'll be back with you in a flash. So it's 11.30 and it's actually lunchtime and there's two lunch places I can recommend in the Magic Kingdom. One of them is the Skipper Canteen, <coughs> which we are not going to do today. And the other is the Liberty Tree Tavern. Now, Skipper Canteen is not all you can eat. Liberty Tree Traver Tavern is. So I'm gonna try and get in front of the parade. I got a parade at noon. Just trying to get to my Liberty Tree. Just trying to get to my Liberty Tree. Hi, <laughs> oh. Oh, don't put up ropes. Uh, she said don't go under ropes. I said this is uh, all you care to enjoy. Liberty Tree Tavern right here. Again, on the other side, it's actually called the Jung, uh, Skipper Navig Junger Skipper Canteen. Sorry, the Junker from Skipper Canteen Navigation Company. Um, I'm going to go on my app. I'm going to check in, show you some of the food and stuff like that, as well as um, a lot of noise there from the boat. That one's going to be hard to explain on your Zoom call. Just saying. Let me just check in real quick, uh, and I'll get back to you once inside. All right, and for the remote work crowd for 42 bucks, you're not gonna really miss this. Uh, yeah, I mean, you've got unlimited salad. You've got turkey, pork, pot roast, cranberries. Oh my God. The, the, uh, the gravy, mac and cheese, rolls, and yes, in the Magic Kingdom, you can actually get alcohol at sit-down restaurants. Look at that feast. Yeah, buddy. Dig in. I'm not gonna lie, if you want to experience uh, Thanksgiving year round, this is the place. Uh, yeah, you can get as much as you want. So, before mac and cheese, uh, all the different meats, a salad for some reason. I'll tell you right now, the Wi Fi here, this is probably just a standard weird case. Um, it is working, but it is not working at the same time. It's uh, connected, but uh, nothing. Nothing is coming. So uh, I'm gonna call that an isolated incident. I think what's weird, I think, whoop, my phone is working. Let me just, let me see if the phone is working. My laptop might just, yeah, my laptop's just having some stupid uh, meltdowns. Yeah. Perfectly acceptable, perfectly quiet, no loud music, anything like that. Uh, again, unlimited soft drinks, I'll let you do. You do, you can buy alcohol. So it's one of the few places in the Magic Kingdom you buy alcohol. And right on the other side of that frosted glass, huh, we're right next to the Hall of Presidents. Kind of the place to sleep if you want to take a nap. But uh, today we can't take a nap, so we gotta make it over to Hollywood Studios as well. 
So um, we're gonna look for one more place to kind of remote work, uh, maybe two more. We'll, we'll go between Adventureland and Frontierland. I think I have an idea of a place that's kind of halfway between the two. Um, and then we'll head over to Hollywood Studios. I think we found places in every area to kind of get stuff done and a place with a plug, which happens to be outside. But plenty of plugs available all the time for anybody who may need them to charge up their things that don't charge over USB that you need for work. If you only had smell vision I'm getting some work done and I'm having ooey gooey, the ooey gooey cough toffee cake with ice cream. And that smells good. Wow, I'll say um, that lunch was fantastic. Gave me an hour to get some work done on the computer again. The Wi-Fi was sketchy here, but um, I connected to my phone to the hotspot. So you might have to do that from time to time full signal, but not, nothing was coming. You do hear a Liberty boat in the background. Did you hear a kid to my right? But um, it is the wonder of what we're going to talk about in the next park. When we get over to Hollywood Studios, got one or two more places here, but when we get over to Hollywood Studios, I want to talk about these noise canceling microphones that can make your life so much easier. But um, got one or two more places that you can remote work on my way out of here. And then we're going to get headed back on the monorail, back in the car, and over to Hollywood Studios because there's no easy way to get to Hollywood Studios by Disney Transit. So we might as well just take the truck. But I got one or two more places here we're going to explore. So next up we've got a location that might not be the best for remote work right now. But this is right in the middle of Adventureland and uh, Frontierland. And it's called Pecos Bills. It is a burger restaurant, taco joint, taco joint, but they do have plenty of seating when it's not in the middle of lunch rush hour. Um, yeah, so they have plenty of seating when it's not in the middle of the rush lunch rush hour. And let's just see uh, what the Wi Fi is like here. I know they redid this pretty recently, so it should actually be pretty good. It's kind of, again, it's, it's noon. It's one o'clock. It's actually exactly one o'clock. So now is a kind of a congested time here, but other times of the day, yeah, it's pretty acceptable. Again, right now, a bit harder to find a seat, but you know, if you do, no one's no one's gonna kick you out for open up a laptop here, and you go right outside, and you'll see right outside that is the old uh, Splash Mountain. And behind it's Thunder Mountain. <laughs> really does not like the exposure out here. Old Splash Mountain behind it's Thunder Mountain. And right over here is Pirates of the Caribbean. So, you know, if you want a quick place to stop and get some work done, that's a really good spot other than, like, the busy lunch hour from, like, 11.30 till 2. Other than that, it's going to be very quiet in there. And there's a very, very good connection. Now, I have a fast pass for um, the Jingle Cruise. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I did it during the night yesterday. Uh, two days ago, two days ago. And I'm going to do it during the day now. We've got a fast pass for the Jingle Cruise. And then we are going to jump on a monorail, jump in the car, and get headed over to Hollywood Studios. But uh, you've seen a bunch of places that you can remote work here. Yes, they're mostly dining venues. Um, sounds, str sounds strange, but there's a lot of quick service dining venues that you can duck in. No one's going to mind if you open a laptop. I literally... Every single place I've shown you, I've popped open a laptop pretty much right after I showed you with the exception of one or two because I was just moving between them. Um, a lot of places in the Magic Kingdom. Pretty much one quick service restaurant in each land, all having a good connection. And yeah, if you want to work, work on the people, whoever you can. Elsewise, a lot of the lines have been updated and have uh, some pretty high-end Wi-Fi in them. Unless I have something else to show you, maybe I'll show it in the front of the, in the park, in the front of the park. I'll see you over in Hollywood Studios. All right, so we are just arriving at our third park. I did just make it through security. It's always so funny when you're bringing a, a laptop and some batteries and stuff to the park. I put them all in my hands and I held them out and they still flagged me over. A little ridiculous, but uh, funny, funny, funny. At the same time, we are going to Disney's Hollywood Studios. Uh, I'm going to take it back to a place that I think is actually most excellent for remote work, but we're going to get in through the turnstiles, and I'll do that, but yeah, well, security is always a challenge when you're carrying a laptop and batteries and everything like that. 
but it's also super efficient, just bing bing. Maybe. There we go. And we're green. And we're in. And now it's time to see, uh, now I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm booking like a fast pass or checking lines or stuff while, uh, while these things are slow. So uh, it, it's just about uh, half an hour after park switch over time. Let's see if I can get a fast pass and then go do Indiana Jones or something of that sort. I think the last Indiana Jones show is at 4.30. I like that show because it's not in a dark theater. So you can put a laptop on your lap, get some stuff done while you're watching the show. But we are in park number three. Park number two for the day, but park number three. And we are going to be doing tomorrow park number four or Animal Kingdom. So we do have the rest of the day today from two till nine, but we're not going to stay till nine. The problem with this park is it has no shade. So uh, yeah, I'm throwing shade at the park for not having shade. I'm going to take you back maybe to Launch Bay before it closes. Because I think that's probably the best place in this whole park, if not to... Uh, you know, all four parks to hang out because no one's ever there. All right, so we are walking now into uh, what I consider one of the most useless places in all four of the Disney parks. Well, other than we'll go tomorrow, take a train ride somewhere that's even more useless. But this is uh, Star Wars. Well, I'm on Zoom. Star Wars Launch Bay. This is really just a meet and greet where you can meet Chewbacca. Darth Vader or BB-8, but there's a gigantic area back here. Uh, they used to have more back here. They should use this to promote their Disney Plus series, but those just kind of get lost. Yeah, there's an Ahsoka poster here, but you can't really do much. I think this is only open like normal business hours, like nine to five, but there's not much here. There could be good Wi-Fi. I just took a video of the Country Bear Jamboree that's like five or six gigs. A good, uh, good test to see uh, if the Wi-Fi is actually sustainable if we've got a couple hundred meg up or down connection. But you'll see this is literally in the back of uh, Disney's Hollywood Studios. And it is a barren wasteland. A totally barren wasteland. There's not much in the way of background music here. So you can definitely uh, snag a seat somewhere here. We got a little, bit of, a little bit of Star Wars background music. Got some seats over here, over here. Even got a little, uh, little milk bar you can set up on. Let's, let's see how the connection is here. If we got some Wi-Fi. And of course, in the best locations we can find that have no background, oh, there we go, I was like, I have no background music or nothing like that. There's no Wi-Fi. There we go. We do have Wi-Fi here. A little bit of cantina music, but no one's going to say you don't cut that plane at home. There you go. It's not hundreds. Oh, maybe. There's... It's not hundreds of megs, let's see. It's kind of an older building. Download is acceptable. Wouldn't say great, but upload is great. So um, this means this is a good place to, if you gotta upload a file, upload a video, something like that, just chill out with your blue milk, or you know, you can even go into your backpack, grab out your laptop, and put it on the, oh god, don't hate me Star Wars people. Um, is that Sabacc or Hollow Chess? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna go with Sabacc. But it could be Hollow Chess or, you know what, who the hell knows? I'm not a Star Wars nerd. They could be the exact same thing. Who the heck knows? Yeah, this is not the best connection I've seen for upload. So if we can find better. But it's relatively quiet here overall. And I did say, I did say I'd show you something here. And I guess now is as good a time as ever to show you that thing. So let me just uh, let me go up right here. So I have something in my bag. Security's had fun with this uh, at all the entrances. Uh, where are we? 
One, two. Here we go. So this is actually from Anchor. This is from Anchor, specifically Anchor Work. And what they are is they are a pair of noise reduction microphones. So let's say for a moment, let me show you three different spectrums. I'm gonna turn off this mic. So now we're on atmospheric sound of the room right now. So you're probably hearing a little bit more going on here. But if I go like this, I'm gonna put this in. This plugs in USB-C or um, lightning. I'm just gonna plug it in, what? Plug it into the bottom here. Let's try that. There we go. So these are little pop mics. And they should have some better active noise cancellation involved here. So, you know, if you need to go on a Zoom meeting or something, you can plug this into the USB-C port on any computer or the lightning port on any phone or the USB-C port on any phone and get a completely different spectrum of audio. So it's kind of interesting. So these are from Anchor Work. They're not that much though, like 150, 170 bucks. They're a lot cheaper than some of the other ones out there. Um, and it's got an extra battery on it and everything like that. And you've got two microphones, which has some really good noise cancellation, noise, ice, noise isolation on them. So you can see I've got, whoop, I've got noise isolation, noise cancellation, and there's, there's different ways to do things. And they can plug into your computer. That's the actual atmospheric sound of the room. And then again, I've not, I've not been able to compare all these before. And then this right here is the microphone that actually connects to the camera directly. So we've got three different kinds of sound. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can find some other places. Um, maybe in Star Wars land or in Toy Story land doesn't have much shade at all. Um, maybe Muppets land. I think we're going to go over on Muppets. Yeah, we got time. We got a half an hour until Indy starts. So we'll go over by Muppets and see what we can find over there uh, as a place to kind of work from the park. But yeah, realistically, you can set up right here at this fake blue milk stand. We're right around the corner. Well, we have to go through Andy's backyard in Toy Story Land to get to the actual fake, uh, fake blue milk. Well, it's a real blue milk stand. But uh, this is Star Wars Launch Bay, huh? So far, one of the best places to uh, work from the park in the park. So this here is another option. Uh, if I didn't go to Liberty Tree, which is all you can eat, this is an all you can eat barbecue. About the same price as Liberty Tree. About the same quality overall. Um, you really want to get them. Eat the salmon here. The salmon here is included. They don't bring it on the initial platter, but you can ask for the salmon. I'm not a salmon fan. Even I enjoy the salmon. But yeah, the trouble is, if you look at this park, there's really no shade here. We're walking through Toy Story Land, we're gonna walk through Star Wars Land. There's no shade, there's no insides. We're just doing the circle over to Muppets and I'm, I'm looking to see. Muppets actually might not be a bad idea. Going into the lobby of Muppets, sitting in the corner, do your thing. Might not be the worst idea in the world. Uh, but yeah, I mean, here, it's just, it's not that bad because it's like 85 right now. But come here uh, during the summer, when it's even busier, and this is an unmitigated disaster. Just saying. Yeah, again, uh, kind of like walking through uh, Toy Story Land. Uh, Star Wars Land has really no cover, no insides other than the actual rides. Nothing, uh, nothing great here. So uh, makes it really hard unless you just want to kind of pop on a bench check some email or, not, or something. The whole back part of this park, other than the ride buildings and some of the restaurant buildings, which you generally need reservations where you can't just pop down on a, on a table. We really don't have any uh, work from anywhere vibes. I mean, Magic Kingdom, we had all those restaurants we could just bun into. Epcot, the, the exit of all the rides, used to be spaces for sponsors. So there's a lot of room at the exit for all the rides. I mean, there's still Test Track still has a sponsor. I think Mission Space might be sponsored by HP still, but I don't think so. Um, you know, the, that's why all that space exists at Epcot. And it used to exist in Magic Kingdom too. There used to be all kinds of spaces in the back for sponsors in Magic Kingdom as well. You know, so, say la vie, how it is. But this whole back half of the park, it's miserable if you don't like the heat, like me, but it's even, 
more miserable if you're trying to get some work done because uh, past launch bay, we've passed through Twistery Land and then we're moving out of Star Wars. And we may have a slight amount of hope coming up right here with a baseline tap house. But uh, I'll take you there. I'm gonna check how things are going. So another good place uh, to get things done remotely is Baseline Tap House. Now I'll tell you, right now the, the beer is good, but the Wi-Fi signal is not great. So uh, just be, be aware of that. But it's nice indoors. I got water so you can be hydrated and everything like that. Oh, there's a rewards card for this? Oh, okay. You learn something new every day, but unfortunately, no Wi-Fi. But at least I got some beer. So, need a little midday pickup. Baseline Tap House. Right between the Muppets Land and the Star Tours Motion Simulator is your place to go. It's just water. But, and the nice thing is, uh, unlike Magic Kingdom, you can leave with your beer. It's weird that Magic Kingdom's a dry-ish park. It's not dry, it's just dry-ish. You can only have beer and cocktails and wine while you're eating a sit-down meal. So it's a dry-ish. If it's a full-service restaurant, you can get alcohol. If it's quick service, you can't. But here, you can just pull up a beer and uh, briskly walk over to an Indiana Jones show that starts in 10 minutes. We got another place uh, right next to Indy that I might show you after. That's called a Backlot Express. But Baseline, pretty good, good beer. But it looks like you're gonna have to hotspot there. It's the Wi-Fi. It ain't great, dog. It ain't great. So if you remember uh, this morning, we saw that uh, Magic Kingdom was quiet because there was a party there tonight. A lot of people have come over to here and like 15 minutes before the show, Indiana Jones is already at full capacity. That's not something I've ever seen on like a normal theme park day before. But uh, yeah, you see that is at full capacity right now, about 15 minutes before the show. So you know what we're gonna go do? I'm gonna show you the uh, Backlot Express. We're gonna go back, show you Muppets, because I'm trying to show you places that you can get some remote stuff done. So um, let's, let's show you, let's show you those places. So I've still got my beer from Baseline. So I'm gonna take my beer from Baseline and go to Indy. Now we'll do Indy at 4.30. Doesn't bother me one bit. We'll just shift everything back a little bit um, and do Indy later. So we're walking over, let's just go from Indy all the way over to Backlot Express. So Backlot Express does have indoor and outdoor seating. Uh, it is a quick service restaurant, but as far as I know, there's no restriction that says you gotta be eating today to, to stay there, to go there. And I think that's important because this park actually has a lot, of, as long as you, you stay from away from that back area where Toy Story is and where um, the main Star Wars land is, because that's just, that's just a hot ass desert. Sorry, that's what it is. But look at this. Look at all, is that actual seating there? Yeah, they've got like a bunch of bar seating here and there's no way for them to even close this down realistically. I don't think those doors really close. I mean, look how the seating you got here. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and check the Wi-Fi. We'll go inside in a little bit. Oh, it's got full signal. Uh-oh. Full signal. This could be a good place to get some sh done. It's been around forever, though. So it's not as, it's not the 100 megabit Wi-Fi we've seen in other places. And it really does matter how old a place is, what the connection you're gonna get is. Um, you know, when the building was last redone, when the things were uploaded, when the things were updated, when you've got an outside and you've got an inside too. I just wish I had that, uh, 
a 300 meg connection back from earlier because I got some some videos to upload to see if these uh, if these connections can really handle it. Uh, but yeah, Tomorrowland's the place that's got the best Wi-Fi connection I've seen in the park so far. And when the Wi-Fi don't work, damn, the cellular that flies. So uh, that's uh, that's your place to go. But this is the inside here. We'll put down, check on the inside of the back lot. If you want to hang out in the air conditioning, I think a lot of people have that same idea. We're outside of traditional crazy lunch hours right now. We're in more uh, non-traditional, not crazy lunch hours right now. Let's just see uh, how we're doing. Maybe we'll even pull out a laptop. Check how things are going here. Whoop. Let's see. Now, remember, last place we tried the laptop was Liberty Tree Tavern. And that connection, not very good at all. All right, let's see. Come on, come on, come on. Speed test. Oh, there we go. This could be good. Could be great. Or could just fail miserably. We'll see. I'm using this because they pretty much have the most servers anywhere. Oh, yeah. That ain't great. Yeah, you can check email. Oh, hold on. Maybe it's catching up. Here, let's uh, let's just uh, let that. Uh, that's running. It's not great, but let's just go. We'll go to No Pants, which is what you're watching this on right now. We will upload a video. Let me find, I took a video of the Country Bears. Uh, that is, uh, what is it? 2.59, yeah, 2.59 gigs. Let's see how that's, uh, to upload 2.59 gigs, it is going to take 33 minutes. It'll probably speed up a little bit, but that'll give you an idea. 31 minutes. It'll speed up overall, but you know, you got a nice table. You got your nice beer. It's in air conditioning. Get some stuff done. Yeah, I think 33 is about accurate. But I want to show you some places in the Muppet Land. Specifically, the Muppet Theater itself plays every 15 minutes. They did some updates to it. I want to check out the Muppet Theater. See what's going on there. We have a 4:30 is the final indie show of the day, so we gotta get there a little, a little bit earlier than last time if we want to see that. I definitely want to see that because I think indie is a great work from anywhere location. Uh, 19 minutes, but uh, I'm gonna go. Let's go meet the Muppets. It's time to play the music. Time to light the lights. It's time to get things started. On the oh, on the oh, well, it's. Yeah, the internet's getting faster tonight. Da -dun 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 -dun. Let's try that again. Dun -dun 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 -dun. I don't know. There we go. That's a little bit better. Almost breaking 100 there on the download. Ooh, I think we're going to break. No, no, I thought we were. Let's see if the upload breaks 100. Might stay here for just a minute. Oh, there we go. Look at that. We haven't moved at all. And our upload is now uh, almost done, 13%. So, might let this upload finish, relax for a minute, and it's time to meet the Muppets on the Muppet Show tonight. So another place that's actually got uh, a good place to kind of uh, relax, get some work done before the movie starts is actually where the Muppets go. So if we come in here, it looks like, uh, I don't know, We'll see how long till we're loading. We got a countdown. This happens every 15 minutes or so. Uh, so, let's see. Just keep in. I think, I think we're. Oh, gotta grab some 3D glasses. There's a timer. We have another uh, five minutes and 23 seconds. The timer, I'll just show you where it is real quick. It's up in that uh, top right corner right there. That'll tell you how much time is left. But you know, you just kind of. Hanging out against the wall or something like that. I'm gonna look. I'm look kind of, kind of special right now. Well, let's just see uh, what our connection is here. 
that last place to let me upload a giant video file, the Backlot Express, so I can't complain. You know, Disney has done a great job with connectivity. If I were to pull out my laptop or anything like that, I get a whole bunch of stuff done. I'm actually saving some stuff right now for the 4.30 Indiana Jones show. Hello, everyone. So I got plenty of time now. Now it's time for you to show so. us your tap dancing skills. Please stand on up and they want people all to, the way forward. They want to get room. They're trying to get people to move forward. But, uh, yeah, I mean, these speeds are far more than acceptable. 98 by, 98 by 81. You're not gonna do, uh, you're not gonna do much better than, than those speeds in a, how about you use bunny ears? In a public Wi-Fi location. We've, we've gone all over, so, you know, you got 15 minutes in the air conditioning here, pull out your laptop, have a seat. You got all kinds of places you can put it down. There's no tables or seats, but guess what? The floor, the floor is very comfortable. So if you were to just kind of come right all the way down, no one's gonna, no one's gonna push you further than the front. So just go all the way to the front right here. You can have a seat. Show you what a weirdo I am. Have a seat all the way in the front. Pull out your MacBook or Windows computer. Or whatever, and you know what? Oh, that check screen. And get some work done. You know? That's just the way it is. We've got another, uh, another three minutes or so. So I'm gonna get some stuff done and I'll come back to you after the Muppets. Stick around. Yeah, so I've got my uh, laptop set up in here, and uh, we're getting like 74 by uh, 91, and they're, they're, they're yelling, waka waka. So, you got your glasses, everyone's getting ready, but I had a good five, seven minutes to myself. That's all you need, these little, uh, little productivity, productivity breaks. All the way behind that and yellow let you line. take care of what you got to take care of Once those doors are closed, while you're in Disney you Parks. Row. You know what's funny? In the Magic Kingdom, we focused on a lot of um, dining options, and we haven't really here because we, we found some other stuff. Uh, it's an exit only. I'll exit. I will enter that way. So this is Pizza Rizzo. It's a dining option. They generally have the upstairs open, I think, during busier times. I just don't want to clean it right now, but again, this is one of those, if you just want to, if you want to come in here, and you want to work, get some work done, there's not a lot of music in here, or any music, that noise canceling microphone will help if you got to take a Zoom call or something like that, it's not the best Wi-Fi, at least where I am right now, this is again an older building, I think this may be original to this park. The newer buildings have better connections. But yeah, look at that. Okay. I stand corrected. We've got a pretty good upload. Well, we had a pretty good upload speed there. I mean, this is acceptable for pretty much doing anything you got to do. If you need to find those 100 meg plus connections, go to a newer building. If you've got to download a file, you got to VNC into a system. Or you got to do something like the top down to the nerds. Those of you that are not nerds, you know, you're not going to like that. Um... Everywhere we've been that we've gotten Wi-Fi, we've gotten at least a 20 by 20 connection. I mean, that's like the worst download we've gotten since we've been on Disney property. But I mean, that's uh, Pizza Rizzo. That's like uh, Disney's version of Chuck E. Cheese. Um, I think it's about time that we head back to the last show of Indiana Jones for the day. Because again, it's the last show. People got turned around, turned away all day. So this is gonna be kind of a chillax time. I'm going to get some stuff done on my phone. Once we sit down, pull out the laptop, check the speed in there, and enjoy the last Indiana Jones show of the day. Then it's time to use some fast passes and single rider lanes and all that kind of stuff like that. But uh, we've kind of been waiting and watching. I did have a fast pass that became available five minutes ago, but I can use it after Indiana Jones too. I'm going to head over to Tower of Terror and do single rider on rock and roller coaster. Maybe check out Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy, because that's a brand new building, and you know what that means? That means super fast internet. So, um, 
there's a lot of places so far. Maybe, I mean, I'm gonna point one out we're not even gonna go to because I just think it's so out of the way. But there is on this road right up here. So you see, if you go that way, you get to the Star Wars motion simulator. That way is the baseline tap house we've already been at. And if you go down this path, there's a restaurant that's original to the park called the ABC Commissary. Uh, I think that's open from like noon to park close. Never anyone in there. I assume there's a pretty reasonable Wi-Fi connection. I just don't really have a reason to go by there. If I do have a reason to go by later, I'll jump in and check it out. But I just legitimately don't have a reason to go by there now. Um, so I'm going to jump into the line for Indy quite a bit early. But I can mess around on my phone, get some stuff done there. And then once that down, pull off the laptop, check the speed, stuff like that. Indy's not in a dark theater. It's in a outdoor theater that's covered so you're not really going to bother anybody by using a laptop in indie like you in a traditional show it never shows after dark the reason the last show is at 4 30 now is by like 5 30 it's dark and the finale scene in indie thank you the finale scene in indie needs a lot of light might even show you a little bit of the finale scene if uh, my seating allows so i'm headed back over we were 15 minutes before before Anyway, 15 minutes before, before, when the show was at capacity. Um, so we're going to head over uh, 30 minutes before. And hopefully, for the last show, we're not at capacity. Then we're going to go to Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster. I, I didn't expect to find this many places at this park, but they're here. They're here. Get used to it. I know there's supposed to be something else there, but I'm not going to say that. Um, I'm impressed. With just the variety and the depth of um, things we've actually found. Uh, places for remote work here at uh, Disney's Hollywood Studios, MGM Studios, whatever the hell else you want to call it from back in the day. Uh, but I think it's time to uh, head into Indy before they close it off again. It does not look oh, good. They're not holding the we closed sign. It's a uh, we open sign. So I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna get some seating because they're counting people in the Indiana Jones Epic Sun Spectacular last uh, showing, last showing of the day. And they're letting us sit right now so I can pull out my computer. I'm gonna take a look at the emails I've gotten in the last uh, 40 minutes or so and handle them. That's the important thing to understand. You get slack, you get things on your phone for right away, and you got that downtime. When you're waiting for a fast pass, you're waiting to go back, waiting for something to open, things like that. You got that downtime, and they are opening the rope for us right now. We are exactly half an hour before the show. It's at 4.30. Let's see where they seat us. I'll come back to you. Once they get nice and settled in. Hey, look! If I'm uh, if I'm here early, I'm coming to uh, front row, slightly off center seats. Uh, this is an older theater overall, but uh, seems to have a quite a good connection speed overall. I mean, 70 by 132 is a pretty damn. Let's do it one more time. But yeah, front row, slightly off center, seems to be. Uh, the place to go in this theater, again, the light from the laptop is not going to bother anybody because it is essentially a daylight theater. There's no air conditioning or anything here. There are some giant fans above, and yeah, I'm not going to spoil it, but Indy comes out of that little hole right there, and then this is the best place for the explosion. I may show you the explosion scene later, just because we probably have the best seat for the explosion scene. Nothing, nothing but the third scene. I hope hope they're doing the third scene they were not doing the third scene via COVID but yeah during COVID but yeah 122 by 120 you sigh I'm gonna take care of some stuff on my laptop now uh, and I'll come back to you for the last scene of Indy because I think we've got really damn good seats to see the last scene of Indy really super clearly uh, and we might find a couple other places, maybe Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy after Tower of Terror. And I think we're done for this park and we just have Animal Kingdom to do tomorrow morning.
stay tuned. Indy Mary, good to go. Cameras are ready. Cameras are ready. Time to set, please. Roll cameras. Rolling. Speed. Mama takes you through Charlie. Does a flight take one time? What up? Action. It's kind of like the main circle that we did that went all the way from Star Wars Launch Bay all the way around to Indiana Jones. And now we're on a side loop, side path that doesn't really loop. They built it out here to build the Phantasmic Theater and the Tower of Terror and other stuff like that. That's why they built this loop out here, but 
think I might have an idea for a uh, work, uh, work remote place here, which is kind of a new thing they built. I don't know if it's still going on. I do have a fast pass I want to use, the Tower of Terror. So we'll use that first. Then I'll take you to this place. And then I think we're done. But uh, it does look like both elevator shafts are working in Tower of Terror today. So that means, you know, even with fast pass, the line can be incredibly long. Uh, the fact that the both shafts seem to be working means the line's not going to be that long. Well, I mean, it'll still be long, but it won't be that long. It's posted at 65 or 85 minutes. If you ever see this posted at 13, that means there's no wait. Then we got Rock and Roller Coaster, which still has Aerosmith on it and not the Electric Mayhem. Just saying. Sooner, soon in time, it'll get Muppets, maybe. But you'll see. Let's do the Tower of Terror. I'm not taking any longer rides because this isn't about rides. I'm going to take you over to um, Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy if it's still running. Just to uh, show you a place you can kind of chillax and get some work done. All right, so for today at Hollywood Studios, I have one more place for you. It is right about sunset. It's a 542. Daylight savings time is in effect. And you might want to go ahead and you might want to say, check everything one more time. Do one more check. There are plenty of benches in this area. This is right behind Rock and Roller Coaster. There's a lot of benches all over. And this is one of the newest constructed things in the park. So, I mean, we've got a bench. Look, you want to talk about prime location? Look, that's a bench. Right next to a restroom, right next to a great Wi-Fi adapter, undercover. Let's, oh, we're on cellular. Let's see, I make these, uh, oh, it's because my, my camera connected. So right next to, we're going to connect to Disney Guest. Let's see how this connection is doing. Smart City is their Wi-Fi. It's reasonable. It's actually better <laughs> further away from the bathrooms. I think that might be where it is, but you know, this is good for kind of ending your day. You need to check some stuff. You need to download some stuff. You got a nice stable connection. Again, this is right behind. You see that's rock and roller coaster right there. Oh, look, look at that upload. There we go. And this is Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy. Yeah, you know what? Here, can you go hang out in the back of this show with a laptop? If it was raining, if it was nasty, if it wasn't, it's actually like 75 degrees outside now as the sun has gone down. So, I mean, one of the newest buildings on Disney's Hollywood Studios property. I've shown you everywhere, other than the ABC commissary, which I talked about. Everywhere that you can pretty much just walk in, do what you got to do. Pull out your laptop, grab out a beer. We've got one more park left, which is Disney's Animal Kingdom. That one will be a bit of a challenge but I do have some ideas. So, I will see you tomorrow because Animal Kingdom is closing in like an hour. So, it's not worth doing that today. I will see you tomorrow and we will uh, go to Disney's Animal Kingdom and uh, see what the connection's like over there. But so far, this and Epcot are your, your, your good parks for doing it. And Magic Kingdom's not bad either. Magic Kingdom, just understand that you're gonna be pretty much all in restaurants. Uh, you've got a couple non-restaurant options here and in, uh, in Epcot. But, um, yeah, I will see you tomorrow at Hollywood Studios. I think that, that's a, a wrap for Disney's MGM, I mean, Disney's Hollywood Studios. Uh, that's a wrap on where you can get remote work done along the way. See you tomorrow at Animal Kingdom. All right, so we are here for our third day of our fourth park, um, which is Animal Kingdom. And we're talking today about how to get remote work done. I've got a laptop, I've got some batteries, I've got a phone, I've got a tablet, I've got all that in my backpack. And it's always a mess through security because I don't have enough to hold out everything in front of me. Remember, if you do have a laptop or something, take it out of your bag, hold it in front of you. The system is stupid can't see things sideways. You want to kind of hold it in profile when you go through those security gates. We're going to go ahead. We're going to go in. We're going to find some places we can set up a laptop, good Wi-Fi and everything like that. 
got moving a bit late today, but uh, overall should be uh, quite a productive day overall, well, at least hopefully. So join along and uh, we'll see uh, what trouble we get into. Remote working from Disney's Animal Kingdom Park. All right, so first up in our uh, quiet places, we are actually in the dinosaur land of Disney's Animal Kingdom. And this is uh, Restaurantosaurus. You'll hear you outside, you will hear the uh, very loud uh, music, well, per se. Um, but there's actually a uh, quiet area inside. If you do want to just kind of come here and do see. Hello. So if you want to come here, there's a little bit of music here. It's not too bad overall. And let's just see uh, how the connection is. And I'm just going to come out here. We are going to do our standard Disney guest connection. I'm going to silence all my notifications. And we shall see what we've got. So this is just, I mean, this is where you start getting very quiet. At least this time of day. So I'm just coming in. Let's see where we're at. Oh, it's not great. We're on Wi-Fi. We're connected to Smart City, which is theirs. Yeah. I mean, it's doable. It's workable. But it's not great. But I'll show you the kind of cool thing. We're just right inside here. If you come in here... And you take it right back here. You really want to hang out somewhere. There's actually a uh, secret bar back here that opens a little bit later. I think it opens in like an hour or so. So you've got that back there. But you'll see nice, quiet, okay connection. I'm actually waiting for a fast pass right now for the dinosaur ride. So I'm gonna have a seat here. Um, pull out my laptop. Get some stuff done here real quick but um it's a good place it's called restaurant of source it's right inside the dinosaur land before you hit the dinosaur ride well soon to be indiana jones ride who the hell knows it's a good place for remote work here in animal kingdom so i will say today is a friday and this park is slammed also just of note there are very very few indoor places in this park that you can walk in without a reservation or anything like that what i mean dino land First place we walked into. Cool, we got them inside. I'm literally on top of a garbage can right now. Uh, I walked all the way through the Asia section. Unless you have a reservation at Yak and Yeti, nothing's inside. I'm in Africa, unless you've got a reservation at one of the restaurants here, nothing's inside. Now we will solve that at the Pandora uh, a little bit later, the world of Avatar. Um, and we will solve that at Rafiki's Planet Watch. A little bit later but yeah i mean I'm, I'm glad i came here on a friday and i forgot that this is actually labor day weekend uh but um i have a fast pass coming up for the safari ride so i'm going to jump on the safari ride with that fast pass or lightning lane or whatever the hell they want to call it i know it's 2023 we use different terminologies now and then i'm going to take a ride out to rafiki's planet watch which has an indoor area you can sit and stuff like that. Yes, you do have to take a train to it. But once you get there, now they've got some indoor areas and it's uh, relatively overall relaxing. I'm not sure what I'm hearing behind me. But uh, yeah, this is not the quietest park. It doesn't have a lot of indoors. I'm an indoor cat, I'm not an outdoor cat. So just be aware of that. All right, so next up, we're gonna take a train ride to some air conditioning. Uh, air conditioning is few and far between. This is called Rafiki's Planet Watch. Essentially, it is a weirdly shaped single directional train that uh, you can only look in one direction because there's a lot of uh, hidden facilities behind it. And this train takes you to another part. Now, the theory is that this is eventually going to become Wakanda from Marvel, but I mean, they gotta make a lot more movies for that to be relevant. The train's leaving right now. There's three trains on this track. The next one will be here in like one or two minutes. How about you see right there? Well, the end of the train, you might be able to see it's pulling out. So we're going to wait for the next train. We're going to check out the um, air conditioning. Thank God. 
over on this side, even though it just got, it got a little breezy, a little cool. But we will definitely check out the air conditioning on the other side uh, and check how the uh, Wi-Fi seating, everything like that is over in the conservation station, which is where you get over. It's original to the park, but the only way to get there, I mean, for passengers, is via is the train. So, train comes like every three or four minutes. There's a couple of trains on the track. Um, we'll go over and I'll show you the air, con oh, the air condition and some places to sit and everything like that. Welcome to one of the few places in the Animal Kingdom Park that has air conditioning that you don't need a reservation for. I know, strange, right? It's original to the park. It's called a conservation station, Rafiki's Planet Watch. Maybe eventually it'll be called Wakanda. You never know. But you do have to take a train to get, oh. Oh, I haven't felt air conditioning in hours. Oh, that feels good. Uh, let's see here. Uh, now this is original to the park, and if you know, we're talking in other parks, uh, the older a building is, the sketchier the Wi-Fi normally is in that building. I don't know, we're about to see. Ooh, ooh, actually, the Wi-Fi is good here. It's nice and cool here. It's probably like 20 degrees cooler than outside in here. And you know, if you got kids, you can take them to the, let them go to the animation experience, learn how to draw some animals, some, some Disney characters, specifically probably animals, walk around. Yeah, see, this is a research facility, so they had to uh, kind of upgrade the Wi-Fi as things went on. But uh, it is actually a pretty damn good connection. There's a whole area you can watch where they actually have operating rooms for the animals and everything like that. So, you know, if you need, let's say you need half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour to yourself, and you're here with, you know, kids and a spouse or something like that, this is an absolutely fantastic place to come because you can sit inside here and they can go outside and uh, pet animals and things like that. Um, let's just, so they have a whole, whole petting zoo for goats and sheep and lamb and all these other things. They call it the affection section. Um, so you'll see right here, there's just, it's pretty packed because today is Veterans Day. I think you got goats and sheep and lambs and more goats and goats and goats and goats. They have a barrier because them goats don't want to be bothered. But yeah, you do have to take a train over here, so it's a bit of a, uh, a trek. If you do want to be outside, get a little bit. Looks like that train that we came on is just leaving, I meaning we've got like five minutes till the next train. Uh, yeah, wow. Even if you sit outside, you have a nice flow of air conditioning coming out. 100 meg download. I'm personally going to sit here for 10 minutes or so. Uh, it's actually cool enough out here, especially with that breeze. Oh, every time the door opens. Uh, I need to do <coughs> I need to do a little bit of work. And then I've got the uh, 2 o'clock. It's 104 right now. The 2 o'clock uh, Lion King show, which this park is so packed that I actually got a lightning lane for Lion King. But it's air conditioned. So there's that. I think I'll see you at the Lion King show because it's a good place to get some stuff done. Just for a little testing here out on the bench, I pulled out my laptop. And yeah, I mean, it looks like we're about a hundred by a hundred right out here by uh, by the goat petting zoo. We're uh, 120, 132, oh God. Yeah, Disney's done a great job. I mean, it's because they need to have this infrastructure to make their app work, but it also makes remote work very, 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 very convenient. And it's very rare in the US that you can find connections this good and this stable and yeah they're they're actually uh they're working perfectly thumbs up so i didn't show you the train on the way here so i might as well show you the train now it's kind of a funky train um it's uh i think it actually runs on um propane or natural gas i think yeah so it's not as loud as a normal train 
and it only faces in a single direction so they can hide all the different stuff they don't want you to see right behind you. Kind of an amusing way to do it, but we are going to head back and then head over to the Festival of the Lion King, which is just right on the other side of the train. So we'll head over that way and I'll see you there. So I am here now in the Festival of the Lion King Theater, which um, was original to the park, but they moved it to make Pandora, and they made a new building that was air-conditioned and everything like that. Um, I will tell you the one thing that's not good here is there is no cell service. Uh, there's no uh, Wi-Fi. It's weird. I'm connected to my camera, but th those are private networks. The cell service on T-Mobile is pretty good. But there is no Wi-Fi, so if you're trying to do uh, any kind of remote work, it could be a little tougher in here, but you know what? I'm thankful for the air conditioning. Very thankful for the air conditioning right here. Hang out in the AC, and then i got one more place to show you that's potentially a remote workplace in the world of Pandora. I'll show you in a minute. All right, so now we are in one of the newest spots in Animal Kingdom. This is the canteen. Uh, it's indoors. It's air conditioned. And right outside, they've got a little place that has a, a sells a frozen drink with some boba. Not alcoholic because I'm driving today. Um, long distance. Let's see. This should have a pretty good connection. It's a new building. When you have a new building, you generally. No, go ahead. So you generally uh, have a pretty good connection here. And I did get, uh, yeah, but look at that. Oh, no worries. So you have a great up, great down. Probably the best in the park. Remember, the newer, the newer a building is, the newer an area is, the newer a zone is, the newer anything is, the better. And then I also got some up. Uh, lumpia. It holds to that. So, you know, if you do a little research, look at the age of the things in the park. This, newest land. It's obviously going to be brand new wired fiber and everything like that. Just as I expected. You need to do some remote work. This is the best place you're going to find in the park. Um, Dinosaur Land is owned. It'll be new again with Indy soon. For Vicky's Planet Watch, owned. You know, a lot of the uh, areas of Festival Lion King didn't even have any Wi-Fi in it. Um, but here, it's nearly perfect. I mean, I wish I had that connection everywhere I went. It's no Magic Kingdom. If you remember where we started in Magic Kingdom, we were getting half a gig down on cellular. But there's no remote work that you're not going to be able to do with this connection. Download, upload, everything to the side. I got a couple more feelings on the whole thing on my way out, but I'm going to finish my pretty colorful drink. And my Columbia. And get headed out. Again, you know, you can sit here with nothing, but I was, if I'm going to sit, I'm going to sit with a drink. Some food. Or something like that. More thoughts on the way out of the park. But I think I've shown you at least three good places in this park to get some remote work done. All right, so that does it for uh, work from anywhere, work from home, work from theme park for Animal Kingdom. Uh, pretty easy park if you know where to go. Again, we've got that uh, Dino uh, uh, Dino Land restaurant, Restaurantosaurus. It's a new event. We've got the. Uh, Rafiki's Planet Watch, and you've got the um, the Pandora Pandora um, restaurant. Name slipping me right now, but there's there's only one restaurant in Pandora. Now, if you do make reservations at other places, well, you might be able to get in there. But uh, that's all I got for you today from Animal Kingdom. Um, three good spots, no reservations needed. Yes. They have air conditioning. But uh, Pandora Land is going to be your best if you're looking for good Wi Fi, good air conditioning, good everything, because it's pretty much the newest uh, plot built right here. And don't count on there being Wi Fi in the Lion King. That's it for Animal Kingdom and where you can work remotely. So I'm headed to the car, so let's wrap this up. I would say the biggest uh, 
The biggest desert, I'm leaving Animal Kingdom now, the biggest desert you're gonna have is actually World Showcase in Epcot. Uh, the front of Future World has great spots, great quiet spots, great spots you can zoom and everything. Works really well. Uh, that's Epcot, good. But the back, World Showcase, where the countries are, it's gonna be a lot rougher to kind of uh, remote work from. Then you've got Magic Kingdom. You definitely wanna have some lunch, so you can have a drink there with lunch, uh, sit down for some lunch. There's a couple of really good places. Remember, anywhere in Tomorrowland has insane, insane Wi-Fi. Uh, you've got all the little restaurants and stuff that you just kind of pop into. Have a pretty good connection throughout. Um, and I didn't do this uh, on video, but I was actually able to remote work from the train. Did a little, little train work. And did it there, Hollywood Studios. Your best bet is probably gonna be one of the restaurants, uh, Launch Bay, the uh, Muppets Theater, right before you get in the Muppets Theater. Um, those are your kind of best bets for places to do it. And Animal Kingdom, again, we did this very recently, and <laughs> so recently that I'm actually uh, heading out of Animal Kingdom now. You've got Restaurantosaurus, you've got Rafiki's Planet Watch, and you've got uh, Sa Sauli Cantina, I remember the name. A Sauli Cantina uh, in the world of Avatar. Yeah, you can pop open a laptop anywhere, but in, in the Avatar world, those are the best places, not Avatar world, in Animal Kingdom, those are the best places to work. So let's, let's kind of rank it. Um, Animal Kingdom's tough because it's hard to get inside. So I'm gonna say this is probably the worst park for uh, remote work. Uh, Animal Kingdom that I'm leaving right now. Let's go for the best. Uh, the best is going to be probably Hollywood Studios. As strange as it sounds, there's a lot of places you can duck into, a lot of attraction exits, a lot of uh, pre-shows, stuff like that. You've got Star Wars Launch Bay. I'm gonna say that's the best. I'm gonna put Magic Kingdom in second place uh, because there's good connectivity in the restaurants. Tomorrowland has a blazingly fast connection and I'm gonna put Epcot in third place. Why? Because the front of the park is fantastic, but the back needs a little work and connectivity and places to do things. This is Richard from No Pants Profits rating. Uh, what do we rate? Hollywood Studios. Number one for remote work, easiest to remote work from. Number two is gonna be the Magic Kingdom with all their restaurants that have really good connection, as well as Tomorrowland, which has an insane connection. Number three, Epcot. You know, <laughs> Epcot's kind of the mullet of uh, remote work. If you gotta get stuff done, Go to the front, because business in the front, party in the back, also drinking around the world in the back. And where we are right now, Animal Kingdom. Worst of all, because there are three places that work, it's hard to find air conditioning here. Um, and you know, if you have to be on a Zoom call or something, you don't want to be all sweaty. This is Richard from No Pants Profits, coming to you from park number four of how do you work from the parks. Park number four. Animal Kingdom, reminding you that when you wear no pants, the only thing you have left to lose, and I did plan this for Animal Kingdom today, is your awesome turtle shirt. If you got any questions, you got any recommendations for other places that I might have missed, I didn't make it to hotels or anything like that, but I think I showed you a lot of cool places in the parks that you can go to if you gotta do a Zoom call, you gotta do some emails, you gotta do different things like that. So Richard from No Pants Profits, reminding you that when you wear no pants, there's only one thing you got left to lose, and that is your shirt. Have a great one. Bye.